What up? Drew Schroeder here, and in today's video, as you can tell by the title, I'm going to teach you a few tricks on how to get over procrastination. Now, I'm not going to be making a long-winded video on this because, I mean, there's plenty of them. This isn't a video to be wasting your time. This is going to be actionable practical advice on how you can become more productive. First off, and this can literally get you to stop watching this video and doing that project right now, is to put off procrastination. That's it. It Sometimes this works. If you, if you decide, you know what? I'm too busy to procrastinate right now. I need to get this done. Sometimes that works, you know, it's worked for me in the past where I'm just like, man, I'm so busy. I just can't procrastinate right now. I'm going to go on TikTok later and then I start doing whatever I need to do. Next is a process called chunking. Now, usually when we have a goal set in mind, we make this huge project in our head, much larger than it really is. So what you can do is you can categorize different things. And sometimes you don't even have to do all of those things. You can leverage it out to other people, such as say you're creating a YouTube channel, creating some YouTube channel for your dream or whatever, because I know that's a big dream for a lot of people. Instead of designing everything yourself, going to a website like fiverr.com and then paying Fiverr to, you know, uh, an artist to be drawing a logo for you, or you can pay someone on guru.com to be writing an article for you, or try and find a way to leverage it out to other people the things that you're not too sure on how to do or if you're not too or if you're too much of a uh, perfectionist see if you can try and push it off on someone else and given the giving them an incentive to do so categorizing things in the things that you can do right now the small simple steps maybe you don't want to be doing this huge like two hour long project and you know man two hours of my life or who knows it could be even longer than that just commit to doing it for about five minutes and once you sit down on doing this for five minutes then you're gonna tend to want to do even more of it and then that's how you can get caught in that cycle you can caught get caught up in the pattern and also by creating that habit you can make that task into more and more habits. Creating habits and chunking is super important if you wanna just absolutely kill procrastination. I understand that not everything that you're procrastinating, you're gonna be very fulfilled when you accomplish this, such as, you know, maybe doing your taxes. Tax season is, a, is upon us, it's April after all. I think the taxes actually got pushed to next month for this year, but See, a lot of people, they just have these really boring, mundane dreams. What I like to do is I like to really juice up my dreams and I make, I, I like to visualize a lot more um, and visualize everything, close my eyes, maybe I'll go for a quick walk for 15, 20 minutes and then um, I, I put myself in a better mood. When I visualize a task that's completed, I'm more compelled to be doing that. That's why visualization is super important for a successful lifestyle. Have bigger dreams and start visualizing all of the tasks that you want to be completed. And another way, along with visualizing the thing that you want already accomplished, is to find out your reason why. Why are you doing this? Why do you need to do this? Think about all the different reasons why you, it is better to have this accomplished. And on the flip side, think about all the reasons of what will happen if you don't accomplish this thing that you've been putting off for so long. I know one of the things that I like to put off is doing the dishes. I absolutely hate doing the dishes. With this simple thing, right? If I'm going through my checklist right here, uh, my boring dreams, yeah, I mean, you can't really make, I understand that having all of my dishes clean is not gonna be too amazing, but when the dishes pile up enough, it kind of does have a sense of fulfillment after I've completed that task. So I do like to have a clean sink. Reasons being, I won't have to clean off one spoon to be eating a bowl of oatmeal. And then you want to be thinking about what happens if I don't do the dishes? Well, they start piling up, it looks nasty, it smells gross after a while, and after a certain point, 
it's I'm going to be creating a whole ecosystem in my kitchen and I don't want that. So when I start thinking that way, all of a sudden it seems more compelling to be wanting to do the dishes. The next step of what you can do is make it more fun. Now, you might be thinking, but doing dishes, it's so boring. How can you make that fun? I, sometimes I like to listen to podcasts. I'll listen to music. I'll watch a long winded video that I don't have time for. So I kind of add that net time, which is no extra time. I fill in that time that an audiobook or a podcast that I've been wanting to listen to and I'll save that for when I'm doing the dishes so when I'm doing the dishes I have something to listen to so that way I'm not just like staring blankly out my window while I'm washing off the dishes maybe you can get to your goal in a different way a lot of people they don't like going to the gym they don't get it like getting all hot and sweaty but they do like swimming just know that don't be stuck to the task that you need right uh, for, for some of the tasks that you might be trying to accomplish, sometimes you can reach that. Don't lose the outcome, but be adaptable to that outcome. The point is, is to make the process as fun for you as possible, so that way that you actually do it. You know, instead of thinking, man, I really have to do the dishes today. I could be thinking, I get to do the dishes today. <laughs> Uh, instead of, <laughs> okay, maybe not that far. Instead of thinking, I have to do the dishes today, I think, well, I get to listen to a new podcast when I'm doing the dishes. So that's cool. I, a new episode just came out. Cool. It gives me a chance to, you know, do the dishes. Or uh, maybe I don't feel like working out my chest and my arms. Today, I'm going to do a full body exercise. And that's going to be getting to my goal a lot faster because I'm more excited to be doing a different workout or switching it up. And then the last thing that you want to be doing to accomplish that task that you've been putting off for so long is to schedule it. All of the best dreams die in the graveyard. So don't be putting off what you've been putting off for so long. Brief story, I just had a roommate move out and he wanted to open this tie-dye business where he was making these tie-dye shirts. Now, mind you, I'm not into tie-dye, but his ideas and his designs were really amazing. The things that he came up with, it was like, sound like really good ideas. And he had all the dyes and you know, he, he had the shirts and he said, I just have to, you know, I had just have to start doing it. And I said, well, why don't you set up shop right here and just start making your little tie dye stuff? And he's like, I will one day. I'm like, someday leads to a town called nowhere. Just remember that when you're, when you're putting something off is it's not going to get done if you don't do it. So schedule a specific time and a specific day and be firm about it. And the more you're firm about it, the more you decide to make that commitment, the more you're more likely to keep that commitment in the future. You wanna create habits, create the habit to be completing that goal that you've been putting off for so long. So stop watching this video and go do what you've been putting off for so long. And Subscribe if you haven't already. Hit that like button if you got some sort of tip out of this. Peace.